Let's use multi-cursor editing in VS Code to convert this repetitive if-else statement to a switch statement instead. This will hopefully make the logic of the code a little bit more clear. Now you won't always be able to follow the exact steps that I'm showing here, but hopefully it'll give you a sense of what multi-cursor editing is capable of. So to start with, I'm going to open up a switch statement here. So you can see that each of these lines is uh, switching on data.type, and it's comparing it to a string value. So I want to say switch data.type, and I'll just open up the block here and not close that. Now we actually need to go and convert all of these conditionals into case statements instead. So I'm going to go and select data.type here, and I'm going to use Control-D or Command-D to create a cursor on each of the lines in each of those conditionals here. So I'll say Control-D or Command-D, just create cursors on each of those conditionals so that we can edit them all at the same time. So just going through until we have all of the conditionals selected. Now I'm going to go to the end of this so that we're at the end of the comparison right before the string value we're interested in. And I'm going to use the delete left command. It's going to clear everything to the left of the cursor. So I'll say command delete or delete left, whatever the key binding is for you. And I'm going to say case so that now we have all the cases. And I'm going to go to the end of the line now and go back a few and then convert this parenthesis into a colon. So things are looking a little bit better now. Now you can see that we have this opening brace for the body of the case statement. I'm going to put that on a new line just for formatting reasons. So I'll say new line here. I'm going to go back to the original line because we now actually need to close off that brace. So now we're actually editing the uh, closing part of each of these case statements. So I'm going to say a closing brace here. Also put that on its a new line. And the final thing we need to think about is fall through. So all of these cases are isolated. There shouldn't be any fall through here. So we need to insert a break. So I'll say break. Uh, semicolon and then another return so that the break is on its own line. Now we're getting a bunch of syntax errors and this looks pretty awful at the moment just because um, we haven't run format yet. And if we actually go up to the opening switch statement here, you can see there's an extra um, break that we just been inserted. Once I get rid of that and then run format, things start looking pretty good. So we're in a pretty good state right now. All of the cases have been converted over. Now we just need to go and actually close off the switch statement and now we're all set. So you can see that by using multi-cursor editing, we were able to automate a lot of this conversion process. Doing this all one case at a time would have taken quite a while, but with multi-cursor editing, we were able to convert them all in a single pass. Again, you won't always be able to apply the exact steps I was showing here, but hopefully this gives you a sense of what multi-cursor editing is capable of.